My name is Kevin Wilkes. I'm the Operations and Maintenance Manager at Ganilli Earth Station. So the Ganilli 6 antenna was built in 1983 and commissioned in 1984. Uh, it's a 32 metre antenna that was built for British Telecom for commercial satellite communications operations. The antenna has recently been repurposed to be a deep space network antenna working on different frequency bands. Okay, let's head up on the structure then. So the way the antenna system moves in azimuth, which is the rotation um, around in the horizontal plane, is by a series of rails and bogies on each corner that basically roll on top of it almost like a, a train system. It's got anti-uplift bars on it which mean that in the case that the wind pushes against the antenna it's not going to be tipped over. Uh, not that with a weight of 410 tonnes that's particularly likely. And the red section that you can see over here uh, is the gearbox and the black section on the end is the motor and we have four of these and the antenna is capable of driving with one pair on its own in the event that we have a problem. So the resilience is built in that if one of them fails it can carry on working with the other pair from them working as a, as a counter torque pair. Two of them have a black end cap on, two of them have a silver end cap on. These silver end caps are so that in the event that we have a failure we can hand crank the antenna. So that means we take this cover off and put a little wheel on the end and we turn the handle and move the antenna. Not very quickly, I have to say. The structure itself is incredibly strong. It was, it's very, very uh, much a triangulated structure with huge I-beams and tubes involved in it. And the stiffness of the structure was really important for DSN operations because it has to be capable of maintaining the antenna shape and pointing angle, both in terms of when gravity impacts on the dish because it's working at different elevations, or as we go around the, the track, you know, with windage and everything on it, it has to be an, a really, really stiff structure. So it continues to maintain the pointing accuracy that we want and the performance we want in different, different prevailing conditions. This arrangement was the old buffer stop. The antenna used to be capable of doing just 360 degrees of movement, which was all that was required for working with um, standard geostationary type communication satellites. When we wanted to use it for deep space operations, we need to be able to follow a traverse that's to the north of us. And the antenna wasn't capable of going through north so we had to change the system around so that it was capable, instead of being limited to 360 degrees of movement, it had to be capable of at least 540 degrees of movement. To allow that, we took off the buffer stop that used to be picked up from here and used to physically stop the antenna from going beyond the end point. And it's now managed from stops that are built into the system inside of the main azimuth cabin but it's now capable of doing 540 degrees of movement which means that we can traverse through the north and we can follow any trajectory that we come across. There are one or two very unusual ones whereby we have to stop and unwrap the system but the majority of passes we can cover now within our normal azimuth travel range. So this is the main azimuth bearing, the central bearing around which the antenna moves is inside of here and inside of that it's hollow. So the middle of this is where the feed system and the cables for the an antenna come up through. So this is our azimuth cabin. The cable banding arrangement is in here which is the bit that allows the cables to turn with the antenna. So this arrangement of tubing that goes up the back of the antenna is called our beam waveguide. The signal is launched from the feed at the bottom and is reflected via a series of mirrors. So down here you've got two mirrors and up on the elevation axis you have two more mirrors. So it allows the antenna system to articulate around the feed and the bottom mirror which means that the signal is always pointing out through the middle of the antenna but the feed can be down here at the bottom which has benefits for us because it, it makes life simpler with the feed fixed down at the bottom. So this is our elevation drive system. It's like a rack and pinion system with a sector, a tooth sector gear which goes underneath the, where the motors are to 
and the motor have a toothed wheel that drives on the sector gear. This is the elevation axis for the antenna system. You can see that when, it, when it's pointing straight up at what we call zenith, which is pointing straight upwards, that this ladder aligns with the one on the backing structure, allowing us to climb up, go via a platform and a hatch into the reflector, and it's possible to get into the reflector to carry out any maintenance that we need to conduct. Inside of this housing, are the encoders that tell the system where it's pointing and the end of the, the bearings, the, the, the pickoffs and some limits for, uh, for, for elevation movement. Thank you for watching, that was our tour of Gunnelli 6.